Legends of monsters, beasts, and strange-looking animals have existed since the dawn of storytelling. But who's to say what's real and what's been forgotten? From tales of dragons on each continent to amazing pictures of a real mermaid, here are 20 mythical creatures that were only seen once. Yeti or not? If you're familiar with urban myths, we're sure you have at least heard of the legend of the Yeti or the other persona he's also known as the Abominable Snowman. But could this living snow creature actually exist in real life? The Yeti itself may be a mysterious creature shrouded in rumors. There's something that was found that's very similar to most depictions of what you might imagine a Yeti to look like. The fearsome creature is the hybrid cross between a grizzly bear and a polar bear. Somehow these two species managed to get together and apparently made it to create a brand new type of bear in the process. Believe it or not, this unusual kind of love story occurred both in the wild and in captivity. One of the main reasons for this strange occurrence to have taken place is speculated to be climate change. The increase of global temperatures have been constantly decreasing the number of actual habitats the polar bears can inhabit, so they've been pretty much forced to move out of their territories. And just as well, the grizzlies have a wider range to live in due to colder climates becoming more accessible. This means that the two bears' natural habitats have merged to a point where they can choose more outlandish mates for themselves, a phenomenon known as flexible mate choice. There isn't really a specific name for the creature produced from these two unrelated bears, although many have called them a growler bear, pizzly bear, zebra bear, grizzlar, or nonulac. But since they're still pretty new to most people, it wouldn't be too much of a stretch to mistake them for a yeti. Now let's get ready for today's Missing Topic. Do you remember this scene from The Little Mermaid? For our Missing Topic today, we're going to be checking out this image of what appears to be a mermaid swimming in a lagoon. Or is it really just a sideways fish? The blurry and out of focus picture doesn't do anything any favors, but just for the shape and colors alone, the creatures definitely have a familiar outline. But that begs the question, are all mermaids red-headed or is it just a Disney coincidence? Mermaids have long been known as legendary creatures of myth from sea shanties and folk tales long ago. Tailors would stare out at the ocean for days without saying anything, only to catch a glimpse of what looked like beautiful women lazing on some coastal rocks or swimming casually in the sea. Was it their imagination or something extraordinary? More often than not, it was in fact a delusion, like a sort of ocean mirage, but on occasion it would be real, just not the woman they first thought. Manatees are an aquatic creature that are kind of like a cross between seals and walruses, and to a homesick sailor lost at sea, they looked a lot like their favorite girl back home. This picture definitely doesn't look like a manatee from this distance, mostly because manatees are often a solid gray color. But then, what is it that we're looking at? If you think it's a mermaid or a mirage, let us know. Tell us about your theories in the comment section with the hashtag missing topic and let's see if we can figure it out. Hey, hey, did you know that if you smash the like button, subscribe and click the notification bell, you're more likely to win the lottery? So what are you waiting for? The Lake Monster Below the hidden depths lie creatures unknown. The ocean is mysterious enough, but how many lakes have we fully examined? The Loch Ness Monster, which has since been affectionately given the nickname Nessie by its fans, is suddenly a large aquatic animal that lives somewhere in Loch Ness Lake in Scotland, hence the name. From the images we've seen, it looks a bit like a long-necked dinosaur, although it really is hard to tell from the original photograph. The legend of this creature began to grow in the 1930s, when a couple claimed to have spotted an enormous animal out in the lake. They compared it to some sort of dragon or a prehistoric animal. Hey, their words, not ours. Since then, numerous sightings of the creature persisted in the following years, which is how this infamous photo of Nessie came to be a media highlight. It's rare to find a conspiracist who doesn't know about Nessie, although many will argue the validity of the creature. The famous photo was later proven to be nothing but a fake that was manufactured to build excitement around the lake, or maybe just as a prank, but the rumors and myths persisted even with this fact, spreading far into modern years. In 2018, researchers conducted a DNA sampling of all creatures within the area of the lake and found that no animal could possibly be as big as the Loch Ness Monster. Instead, 
They found that the area was mostly populated by large eels, which provides one more possible theory for Nessie's existence. If they did find the creature outside of Loch Ness, would it even be a Nessie still? Fate of the Gorgons What's worse than a bad hair day? How about having a head full of snake hair? The tangles are downright deadly. But that's what it's like every day for Gorgons, a mythological creature from ancient Greece. For the most part, Gorgons have generally been portrayed in ancient Greek literature, although they do appear as seductive forces in Hollywood these days. If you need a cursed femme fatale, who could be better than a dangerous snake lady? But what explicitly makes up an actual Gorgon is a bit up to interpretation. The staple look for these creatures is almost always that they have snake hair. But their attractiveness is completely subjective. The original term doesn't refer to a group or species, but the actual Gorgon sisters, a trio of women that not only had venomous biting reptiles on them at all times, but also would turn anyone who looked into their eyes into stone. As the first story went down, two of the Gorgon sisters were immortal, while their sister Medusa was eventually slain by the demigod Perseus. Even though the other two should theoretically be alive today, it's the fallen Medusa that seems to have had the lasting impression over the years. They say that Medusa actually released an entire lineage of lesser Gorgons before she was killed, mostly creatures inflicted by her curse to turn others to stone. Although, these ones weren't as tightly bound to the rules as she was. This could mean that they didn't have full control of their snakes or their stone-changing powers weren't always active, but they were still considered a passable threat. Supposedly, the best trick to stop a Gorgon is to use a mirror, so maybe it's not a bad idea to keep one handy. Fairy Finders Fairies are possibly the most iconic creatures in fantasy you could think of. They're so well known that almost everyone has their own idea of what should be considered a fairy. To some, it's Tinkerbell, a small and dainty creature that flies around and casts magic spells. To others, they could be human-sized mages with butterfly wings or even tiny flying gremlins with razor-sharp teeth. The truth is that not all fairies are small or cute, and most are definitely not kind. But some are. They can be a humanoid or just balls of light and their size can be anywhere in between. They have been featured in books, poems, cartoons, and video games, and hardly any are the same as another previous iteration. The only common factor is that they're extremely difficult to find. They like to hide deep in misty forests or hidden in caves covered by giant boulders. Sometimes you can only find them in a gap between realms. It's thought that if you lose something, you know for sure that you just put down Maybe a fairy is the one that took it. But is that really something fairies would do, or is it just an excuse to cover up one's own mistakes? It must depend on a case-by-case -case situation. Sometimes fairies stick to one person that they like, but for most other times, it probably just means that person is forgetful. Mermaid's Tale The myth of mermaids has been known to bring an interest to the ocean and what may or may not be hiding just beneath the shores. Although there are plenty of motivations for seeking mermaids, many still argue that they're out there somewhere. Since technology has advanced, there have always been countless videos and bold claims of someone spying out some real mermaids in the wild, although many of these claims have been outright faked or disproven in one way or another. Some people, however, can actually claim that they've seen a real mermaid in the flesh, if by real you mean a real person wearing a fishtail. This woman, who goes by the name Hannah Mermaid, takes very beautiful pictures in the water with her tail on, sometimes even surrounded by other sea life. Her depictions usually involve a sequin outfit, both the tail and her underwater bra that matches the colors of the ocean. As a character, she hopes to bridge together the ocean world with our human lives, connecting us back to nature through underwater photography. The animals she's seen most with in her photos are whales dolphins, sharks, and manta rays, all of which are meant as a way to bring awareness to some of these endangered species. It's definitely an interesting way to gather attention, and it doesn't hurt that her pictures are pleasant to look at. Maybe if other mermaids come out of hiding, more people will work at preserving their homes. Horse and man as one Horse and men have very little in common, yet people can easily recognize a hybrid version of the two. Centaurs are another mythological creature from the Bronze Age of Ancient Greece. 
But unlike the Gorgon or Cerberus, these creatures belong to their own class and species. The image of the centaur has lasted throughout the ages across all spectrums of media. It does beg a new question though, would you rather be a centaur or would you want to know and be friends with one? Having the legs of a horse could be a cool privilege when you want to run from one place to another without needing a car, but is it worth the huge increase in size? Plus, good luck finding any pants that fit. On the other hand, being friends with a horseman could be the best way to have fun on the run. That is, if they're willing to carry you like an actual horse would. The original centaurs were explained to have been followers of Dionysus, the Greek god of wine and debauchery. They were known for being rowdy and starting fights while enjoying drinking and women all the same. Of course, this gave them a bit of a negative reputation in history, leading many to assume that most centaurs were savage creatures, featuring the worst of beast and man all wrapped into one. But later stories showed that there were other tribes that have been known to be peaceful and even wise. The centaur Chiron, for example, is said to have trained two of the most prominent heroes, Achilles and Hercules. Looks like they can be pretty friendly after all. A bull man. The term Tor has Greek roots that refers to any kind of creature with a furry humanoid body hybrid. We've already talked about centaurs, the half human, half horse species, but now we're going to check out their cousin class, the species of Minotaur. You might have guessed, but these guys are also a big part of Greek mythology, although instead of a horse body, they have their second half in the style of a bull. There was one Minotaur in particular that was the most famous for living in the center of a labyrinth on the island of Crete. His name was Asterion, and he was stationed there as a form of punishment for causing destruction and havoc wherever he went. The origins of this Minotaur are pretty distinct, especially for Greek stories. The wife of King Minos was cursed by Poseidon to fall in love with a bull, and after a short while, a bull-human hybrid was born. This obviously caused a lot of problems for everyone involved, but that's just how most Greek tragedies go. The first part of the word Minotaur was actually from the name Minos and its reference to Minos' bull that his wife fell in love with. It's a bit of a deranged and unsettling story by today's standards, but most Greek hybrid creatures were simply created this way or through some other far-fetched version of mythological magic. Older versions of the Minotaur often depict the creature with a bull head and a man's body, the opposite of the common centaur. Although, a more modern take is to follow the centaur's footsteps and have a bull's body with a human torso. It may not make much of a difference to us, but it probably means the world to the creature. Werewolf Rules Wolf, dire wolves, and werewolves, oh my! There seems to be an endless amount of these furry threats, although they have different takes on the same type of creature. Wolves and dire wolves, as we already mentioned, are actually living creatures from different eras in time. Also, they strangely aren't related at all. Werewolves, on the other hand, well, if they're real, there aren't too many public records of their interactions. You mostly see them in movies these days, but they can be interpreted very differently depending on who you ask. Most werewolves function in the same style as vampires in that they're shapeshifters who have been bitten and infected by another of their kind before they transform into their furry counterpart persona. Humans are mostly bitten by other werewolves to become the same type of creature, although there's speculation that the trait can be passed down to their offspring. It's unknown where the origins of werewolves in modern media began. Although many creatures across the world have written stories of a beast-like man hunting and eating livestock before fleeing into a forest under a bright full moon. So maybe there's a bit more to the truth than just being a pure work of fiction. Most werewolves consider their status as a curse because of their lack of control and animal instincts. But if the power of a werewolf can be controlled, we're sure there would be a pretty big stir in the world, along with many viral videos taking off. Immortal Flaming Birds There are birds that talk and birds that walk, birds that swim, and according to the legends, birds that burst into flames and are reborn again for all of eternity. We're talking about the legendary phoenix, the bird from myths that represents the power of a sun in a squawking package. The origin of the phoenix started with ancient Egyptians. They've been said to live anywhere between 500 years to 1500 years 
although depending on the story, they could live and die an indefinite number of times. Their whole gimmick is that once they've lived a long enough life, their bodies will suddenly combust into flames and leave a pile of ashes behind. From those ashes, a new but also the same phoenix will rise as an infant once again. We presume that the new phoenix still has the same memories of the previous one, although that isn't always the case. Maybe it's sort of similar to the British show Doctor Who, where each reincarnation of the main character is a different person, but their memories and actions stick around as part of who they are going forward. Another strong concept about the phoenix is that it's not only potentially immortal, but also capable of healing drastic wounds instantly. They have a strong healing factor, sometimes depicted as blue flames that are somehow cool to touch, and they can share this ability with others that they deem worthy. Throughout history, there have been countless unproven records of people spotting these flying firebirds, but could any of them be true? Between pictures and written depictions, there seems to be a clear idea of what the phoenix represents. All we need to do is find out where they like to hide. Dire Wolf Origins Wolves are fearsome creatures that are a far cry from the domesticated pups we're used to seeing at our friend's house or at the park. But did you know that there are even bigger, more fearsome versions of your average wolf as well? And we're not talking about werewolves. These giants, bone-crushing species of wolves are named dire wolves and they prowled all around North America until about 12,000 years ago. The popularity of this extinct species definitely saw an intense spike after their fantastical depiction in HBO's hit series Game of Thrones. But as the true stories go, the real dire wolves were once believed to be closely related in today's modern wolves. Apparently though, this did not turn out to be true. The origin assumption from scientists was that dire wolves interbred with gray wolves and other related species, presumably watering down their genetics as the dire wolves went extinct. However, a recent study revealed that dire wolf DNA is actually very different from these other canines. Nowadays, the only appearance from the dire wolves in nature is from multiple fossils found across North and South America. Scientists state that the DNA from these fossils will better help them to figure out the origin of dire wolves and if and where their descendants might be. For now, the closest living relative, based on DNA, is that of the African jackal. It may not be an actual wolf, but it looks like there's still much more to learn about these long-forgotten animals. Dragons around the world Did you know that there isn't just one type of dragon? Just like how different countries have variations of the same species, like the panda bear or the polar bear, there are also continental differences between mythological dragons too. In Egypt, dragons were known as a keku and they had long serpent-like bodies with four legs. They were explained to have been living in the most remote corners of the country and would guard areas like the Nile Valley or the distant deserts. Fafnir comes from Scandinavia and began his life as a greedy dwarf before he was cursed by the trickster god, Loki. He was then transformed into a beast of a monster that resembles our modern idea of a dragon. In Mesoamerica, we had the Quetzalcoatl or Kukulkan that was worshipped by the Aztecs and Mayans. This dragon had a feathered snake body and was in charge of ruling over the sun. There's also the fearsome store worm from Scotland that's occasionally called Master Worm or Mester Store Worm. This one is seen as a force of evil that caused contamination to all of the plants and animals it interacted with. These examples are also unique in their own ways, yet despite how far apart their origins are, the fact remains that a giant reptile-like creature with wings and control over elements seems to be a common story all over the world. Maybe dragons once lived in the same world as us, but have since gone extinct and only left the rumors of what they could have been. Maybe they were dinosaurs that we haven't found any fossils of. The truth is stranger than fiction, sometimes. An Irish Monster Have you ever been scared by something that you weren't sure was actually scary? If you saw this thing in the woods at night, your first thought would probably be, Aw, what a cute demonic otter-dog hybrid. Or maybe not. If we're being honest, we wouldn't be able to pronounce the name of this thing before we ran screaming from it. It's called Dobar Chu, and it comes from local tales in Ireland. From this image we've seen, it appears to be a green tiger with webbed feet. 
but the name literally translates to water hound or deep hound and it's preferably known as the master otter. It's an amphibious predator that's been said to hunt in pairs, especially for humans that approach too closely to the water's edge. The most famous story of the creature originates back to the 1700s. Records say that one of these beasts lunged at a young woman who was washing her laundry in a river right before her husband came back home. When he saw the monster attacking his wife, he flew into a rage and stabbed the creature directly in the chest and landed a fatal blow. Before it died though, the beast allegedly let out an ear-piercing screech. In another version of the story, it frightened the husband's horse and in retaliation, he killed it along with its unborn child. There are also two tombstones in Ireland which contain depictions of the creature, so there does seem to be some merit to the tales. It still remains unknown if these stories are actually true or if it will just remain as part of Irish and possibly Scottish mystery. Maybe one day we'll get a better picture of one up close. Ogre Lifestyle Look, it's a big scary ogre. But these ogres are all just video game and fantasy characters. Has anyone ever seen an ogre in real life? Maybe we should start off with what an ogre is first. Different mediums have different representations of what this giant beast looks and acts like. The common trait usually is that they're big, ugly, and stupid by stereotypical standards. Although the successful film franchise, Shrek, gave that trope a fresh new twist. The fairy tales of old had claimed that ogres mostly ate humans as a delicacy, but were savage enough to take bites out of lambs and cattle while they were still alive. The term ogre originally comes from a French passage that's based on the Etruscan god Orcus. The idea must have gained traction and spread throughout Europe until more stories were established, including Jack and the Beanstalk and the original Puss in Boots. The monster creatures are known for living alone and in isolation, often deep in the woods or in hidden caves, maybe even an occasional swamp. But despite their human form, they can't seem to get along with creatures that they find delicious. It would be troublesome if your ogre neighbor caved in and ate one of your kids one day. Since they aren't as clever as humans, it just seems to make more sense to hide and grab them when their guard is down rather than putting up a constant fight. Although they don't often go out and cause trouble on their own, their strength is the real deal. If you're ever unfortunate enough to cross paths with a giant hulking ogre, your best bet is probably to just run. Hybrid Monster in Jersey We're sure everyone is aware of Jersey Shore, but what about the Jersey Devil? They have unsurprisingly little in common other than their namesake, but this chimera creature has been characterized over the years as having the face of a horse, the head of a dog with deer antlers, the body of a kangaroo, giant bat wings, and a forked devil tail. If that isn't intimidating enough on its own, the creature also apparently stands at over six feet tall and has been lurking around South Jersey in the United States. Maybe some states just attract weird attention. According to the legend, which has varied over the years since 1735, a pregnant and expecting mother was cursed to have a devil child. The child was normal at first, but then began growing the aforementioned animal traits and parts. Maybe the family thought they could keep the kid's newfound body parts in check, or even a secret from the outside world, but things took a drastic turn. Before they could get any help or even figure out what was going on, this mother child grew more and proceeded to devour the entire family. From then, reports say that it flew up in the chimney and kept to the skies indefinitely, haunting the region to this very day. In the years following that original story, chicken coops all across South Jersey were apparently torn to shreds along with various farm animals. There was an especially bad attack back in January of 1909, though none could confirm if this was actually the work of the Jersey Devil. But if it wasn't, who did all of that damage? Curiously enough, since the last attack in the early 1900s, fewer reports of the creature have been made and there have been hardly any other appearances. The Parts of a Chimera The threatening chimera is a beast not meant to be trifled with. The Greek stories described it as a fire-breathing female creature that was a combination of other animals. The way the first story described her was that she had the frontal parts of a lion, like the head and mane, 
but the middle section of a goat. Then the back end was scaly with the wings of a destructive dragon and finally a venomous snake's head as a tail. It was essentially a mashed up monster among the many monstrous children that came from the Greek figures Typhon and Echidna. A couple of the other children and the Chimera's siblings included the guard dog of the underworld and the many-headed Hydra. Talk about a powerful trio. As the original tale goes, the Chimera was eventually killed by the hero Bellerophon as a part of his quest. But in our modern times, the word Chimera has been used a bit more loosely. It's generally a term meant to describe a variety of fantastical beasts as long as they aren't a standard creature you would expect to see elsewhere. Original characters and other animal crossbreeds you can't find in the real world could sometimes qualify as being one. A half goat, half lion should count, but so could an alligator warthog. It seems to be a catch-all term in that regard. Emuji Lore Many countries have different kinds of dragons in their mythical history, leading many researchers to think that there's a worldwide connection. But while there's a noticeable difference between Western and Eastern style dragons, Korean folklore states that all dragons were actually emojis before they were dragons. Dragons in the Western side of the world are more closely associated with fire, but emojis are very much tied to water and clouds. Though that may sound like some gentle imagery, the emoji is said to be extremely vicious. Legends say that they can consume almost anything and everything, and they aren't afraid of trying out new dishes. The creatures are also known to have a long lifespan, so there's plenty of time to expand their taste palate and get a hunger for human flesh. There's a common theory that suggests that this creature only exists in the space between life and death, which is why it's often stated to be seen during times of plague. No matter how you look at it, the emuji is a very strong and powerful creature. However, due to its violent and harsh nature, we suggest you stay away from this one too, no matter how cool it may look. Of course, if you can see one in the wild, chances are that it's already too late for you. Nowadays, people don't really have the same belief in dragons they used to. Who knows though, maybe one day real dragons will return and rule the skies above us once more, including the Emuji. Oni Festival If you're well-versed in Japanese folklore, you would know that it's filled to the brim with various monsters and creatures. Arguably, the longest-lasting and most popular monster would have to be the classic Oni. Their demonic appearance and demeanor gave them an evil reputation for kidnapping children. Oni have since then been identified as harbingers of chaos and evil. However, this image has changed in recent years. In traditional Japanese media, Onis are presented as ogres with sharp horns and even sharper teeth. And while they're typically red, blue Onis are also quite popular and they're usually depicted carrying around giant metal clubs. As a culture, Japan keeps the idea of Onis alive through their media and on certain special occasions. They're most often seen during a February festival in Japan that's used as a means to drive evil spirits away. In this festival, families and friends will gather around to throw soybeans in their house to cleanse it of monsters like the Oni. Sometimes someone will even dress up to look like the Oni and take a full frontal soybean attack to show real Onis that they aren't welcome. In modern times, Onis are typically seen on Japanese buildings as cartoons or graphics. They even have their own statues, similar to gargoyles, called Oni Gawara. Water Sprinter Can this lizard really achieve the biblical task of walking on water? Nicknamed the Jesus Christ Lizard, this tiny reptilian creature can run so fast that it can sprint on water when it's startled. If only an alarm clock could do the same for us. It's called the Plumbed Basilisk and it lives on the edge of rivers and ponds, so this is probably just an everyday task for the little lizard. Younger basilisks can make it about 10 to 20 meters across a body of water, while the more aged and older ones have a much harder time moving that far. These creatures can live to about four to six years old, so they don't have a huge amount of time to develop their water sprinting skills before they get too heavy and slow. Their typical habitat is in forests and along lakes and rivers. They can usually be found anywhere from dry to moist and wet forest areas. They hunt a variety of living prey such as insects, scorpions, shrimp, and fish, as well as other smaller lizards they may come across. 
though they are not just carnivores and cannibals, as they can also munch on flowers, fruits, and plant buds. But why do they have the ability to run on water? Maybe it's a mystery for another day. Kraken Below the Sea The enormous, eight-armed kraken is a legendary sea monster that's stated to be located off the shores of Norway. Back during the great pirate era of the 1700s, there was always a talk about kraken as sailors. Superstitions of their surroundings grew, and the first time the kraken was mentioned and given a proper name was in a young sailor's logbook in 1700. This inspired more and more sailors to write about their supposed encounters with the creature. Its description led to many artists giving their own interpretation of what this horrible beast looked like. The most popular interpretation is that of what looks to be a giant octopus attacking unfortunate sailors in their ships. In modern times, the kraken is used as a monster in most pirate stories, many of which take much inspiration from the artwork previously mentioned. Though nowadays the kraken is thought to be nothing more than just a giant squid, the scary boogeyman. The legend of the boogeyman began in Romania and was used as a method for scaring children into obedience. In its earliest depictions, it was described as a tall man wearing a black coat and a hood or a hat. Technically speaking, the boogeyman only exists as a myth or a legend. In many cultures, it's used as a way to make children dream of an entity that would take them away if they misbehaved. As most parents have said, beware the boogeyman. The origin of the word is said to have come from goblins or scarecrows because of their shape and functions. Though the boogeyman is said to take many forms, depending on the culture. In most versions, the boogeyman's diet consists entirely of children, naughty or nice, although there are some variations where it only kidnaps children but doesn't eat them. One of the most popular interactions of it is Baba Yaga that's described as an old crone who flies on a tree branch. This version comes mainly from Polish and Russian folklore. Although these creatures are mostly meant to keep children better behaved, you never know who could creep out your window at any time. Hopefully, these stories won't keep you up at night. Now that you've seen a whole cast of mythical creatures, do you feel like maybe there's more to them than just the myths? All stories start somewhere and most of the characters have come from tales so long ago. No one knows exactly what their inspirations actually were. Maybe they're more real than we can imagine.